absent lovelies to watch on Monday, along with Mr. Cloud, and we'll take a look. Um, these are called factoring in quadratic form. And what that means is this is how we're really going to factor our vortex. Um, and these vortex are going to take the ideas that we used in Chapter 5. So factoring in quadratic form means we really build on everything we did in Chapter 5. And I think that was Monday's warm-up because I did a review of factoring with you guys and your eyes can go with this. To me, this is the most difficult lesson because this is where they expect you to pull in everything that you did in factory in your freshman year. Where the first two lessons, it's brand new, it's kind of, you know, it follows a very set routine. Um, a lot of these problems, you do have to look at each one individually and start there. But what I'm going to tell you guys is that if it is two terms, and this is what's on that factory sheet that I'll give you on Monday, if it has two terms, then it is simply going to be the difference of squares. Okay? And because um, it's an even power, we're going to take the square root. So this way we don't have to use math for. Um, when we talk about difference of squares, we're simply going to use the square root. So when we talk about that, when we break down a difference of two squares, it's a um, plus b times a minus b, and I'll have that on your sheet. Um, I really refer back to how we factor quadratics. So x to the fourth has to be broken in half. It has to be broken into x squared times x squared. The x to, or the 256, I'm sorry, isn't broken in half, but the 256 is where we take the perfect square. So we're going to take the square root of 256 on our calculator. So tonight, that should be the function that you use on your calculator is the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of 256, and I believe that's 16. Can someone double check with me here on Friday? So I have x plus 16, or x squared plus 16, x squared minus 16. So it doesn't look too bad, right? We're used to doing the cube root on our calculator. This looks very similar to it. What happens in this lesson now, guys, is we have a lot of two-step factory. And so what I mean that by that is because all of these are going to have two terms, you're going to have to look for this difference of two squares twice. All right? So you're going to want to be looking for that. It falls in here a lot because our leading coefficient or our um, leading term is going to be an x to the fourth. And so we're going to be breaking that every single time into x squared. So we could still have difference of two squares. This one can't be because it's addition. So anything that has adding in it, you're not going to be able to break down. So I really like to have plus signs in my factors. But this next one, I need to check and see if they're perfect squares. Well, we know x squared is. It can break into x and x. Is 16 a perfect square? Yeah, it's 4 times 4, so we're going to have the plus 4 and the minus 4. And so you will start to see more problems like this today. All right, guys, so I've got three examples that will kind of take you through that, showing you, one, where you see the difference of two squares, making sure you don't um, miss it, and then making sure you don't accidentally try and do difference in two squares too early. So let's take a look at the next one. I have x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 15. When it's a trinomial, you're going to have to do what we call the guess and check. All right? And when we guess and check, that means we list the factors of C. And so I know x to the fourth is always going to get broken down into x squared times x squared when it's two or three terms. All right, so these trinomials are going to get broken into binomials. X to the fourth can only be broken into x squared times x squared. I have a negative 15 here, and so this is where I'm going to list the factors of 15, 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. One of those pairs is going to be able to give me a negative 2. Now, the reason one of those pairs is going to give you a negative 2 is because in order to multiply and get a negative 15 here, I have to have a plus and a minus. One of my factors has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. And so when I start looking at that, 3, 5 is a nice combination because they're two apart. So if I have a positive 3 and a negative 5, I can get a negative 2 there. 
Oh, wait, 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 positive two. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, I just misspoke there, didn't I? Yes, it should be a positive two, so I need five minus three. Thank you. I think I'm more tired at the end of the week than I realized. Thank you, Lily, <laughs> for catching that. So I should have that positive two action. So obviously, since you guys are trying to catch my mistake there, you recognize that this is 5x squared. This is what we mean by that guessing and checking. So you pick a value, a pair of factors to put in, and then you can check them that way. Now remember, guys, we said anytime we have subtraction, we want to check and see, are they perfect squares? So the x plus 5 doesn't need to be checked because it's addition. I need to check this one. Is 3 a perfect square? No. So this is going to be. Thank you guys for checking my sign there. I apologize. All right, let's take a look at one last one. No on your own. Here we go. Okay, so you guys, we're going to start with what? X to the fourth. So I can break it down into x squared and x squared. What does this start with? X is six, which tells us we're going to have some sort of a greatest common factor. So if nothing else, I'm noticing all of these x's here. And so there's going to be an x that factors out. And we saw that. Monday on the perfect cubes, you guys sometimes had to factor out x's. I take that smallest exponent, so I take the 2. I'm hoping that something divides into 123 and 300. So I'm going to try 12. I expect that it doesn't have batteries in it. I'm going to try 12. Does 12 divide into 123? No. No, because I know 12 goes into 144. So I'm going to try something else. Does 6 divide into um, 123? No. And guys, I know at this point, because 123 is odd, I can't divide it by even by um, any of the even numbers. I'm going to have to divide it by an odd number. So what factors of 12 could divide into 123? Three. three. So if we try that, 123 divided by 3 is 41. It works. And we know 3 divides into 300. So we have this um, common factor of 3x squared, which is going to be 4x to the 4 minus 41x um, squared plus 100. This can be a long guess and check process, guys. Um, if we don't start thinking about um, what some of our options are going to be here. I do all my math right there. Okay. What I want to do is list these factors of 100 and just kind of have those hanging out in my head. So I've got 2 and 50. Um, 3 doesn't work. 4 goes in there 25 times. Um, let's see, 5 goes in there 20 times. 6 doesn't work. 7 doesn't work. 8, 9 don't work. And then we have 10 and 10. A lot of combinations to try can be very tiring. What I want to tell you guys is because this chapter is focused on refactoring, I'm going to start always this, um, my guess and check. I'm going to start with a perfect square. Okay? So when I look at these, 4 has 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. In chapter 5, I always told you to start with a pair that's closest together. Well, I'm not going to start with the 2, 2 in this problem. I'm going to start with the 1x and the 4x. This is going to be x squared here, guys. Make sure we don't miss those. And the reason I start with those is 1 is a perfect square, and so is 4. I need to have two negatives. And so now I need to look for some other combination over there to try well, 100 is a perfect square, right, guys? But that's a pretty large number to start putting in here, correct? So I'm not going to try that one. Is 2 or 50 a perfect square? No. Is 4 or 25 a perfect square? Yeah, they're both perfect squares. So I'm going to try that combination. Now think about where you want to put these. I have a 4 to put in here and a 25 to put in here. Which of those do I want to multiply by the 4? The 4, because 4 times 25 would have me all the way up to 100, and I don't want that. Now I'm going to put the 25 in here. 
I can't tell you guys 100% of the time that that's going to happen, but this is the majority of what's going to happen here. Is you're going to grab these perfect square factors. This is negative 16x. This is negative 25x. And what do negative 16x plus 20, negative 25x add up to give us? Negative 41x. So there's what I want. This 3x squared is still hanging around. We're not losing it. Now, I do need to um, remember, guys, you need to check and see do either of these break down. Well, is x squared a perfect square? Yeah, it's 4 a perfect square. We said, I know the answer is yes, because that's why we picked it. So that factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. 4 was a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. So 4x squared is 2x times 2x. My signs have to be a positive and a negative, and they're always going to be that for those perfect difference of two squares. And 25 is 5 times 5. Remember, 3x squared is still hanging around. So this is what our final answer looks like. Guys, this is the most factoring that you could possibly do. I don't think we see any of that in today's problems. Today's problems more look like number um, one, where we factor it, and then just one of the factors keeps breaking down, okay? But that can happen with trinomials, um, and you're also going to have the greatest common factors you have to look for, okay? So your assignment today is still on page 349. We left off at 49, so now we're going to pick up at 50, and we go 50 through 58 all. So you guys have nine problems again.